doing, sister? I'm good. How are you? Good. Now I need to buy a house. Okay. I need to get my credit mess fixed first. But I got I'm you. trying to I'm trying to adjust that, right? Okay. But I want to be able to help other community members mm -hmm. um, that deal with stigma uh, to actually find ways around this. So can you tell us about some of the ways that um, community members have felt stigmatized? Yes, the areas of lending? definitely. I feel the stigma that pe people of color have for lending is that they can't afford it. And when it comes to that, I come in with education. I talk about, hey, these are the minimum credit scores that you need in order to qualify for a home. This is how much you need in order to put a down payment on your home. Um, the stigma is really, I would say it's a mindset that people have and it stops them. It's like a barrier of entry. Like I can't do this so they don't try and don't have that conversation with the lender in order to get the education and see we but we need that education because yes. i think you you probably like the 411 when it comes to lending right <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hit That's me up. I'm put. we're gonna put that on the car right <laughs> but can you give us like four or five different examples or three uh different examples that we need to know when it comes to lending yes we need we need that credit score that you were talking okay. about. I need that at least the minimum of 580 in order to get in most programs like FHA. I need you to know your income. What's your salary? What's your hourly, hourly wage? And I need you to know what your monthly debts are. So in order for us to go ahead with lending, I need to know that information. And you should know that information for right. yourself too. Right. So what's the positive and negative sides of of that pro the process for you? <laughs> the positive... The positive, someone becomes a homeowner. That's always the positive, no matter how much we go through through the process, right? I would say the biggest con is seeing the journey for someone because it's tough. Like you go through, you go out there with Trey, you look for a home, you might not get that home, right? You have to go to another home, you might not get that home. So seeing the buyer continue to go and get homes and they get a little discouraged. I would say that's the biggest con because they, it's an investment, right? You're invested with your feelings. You're invested with your finances. We talk. So I think that's the biggest con to just see the discouragement in buyers when they don't win their home. Yeah, but you, you're you a great navigator from what I hear, okay? <gasps> yes, let's navigate. Okay. <laughs> so how are you able to find those programs? Are there specific programs that people should look into or how do you go about with that process? Yes, I am big on let's read the guidelines. So the federal government sets those guidelines that we have to read. And them folks. Them folks created those <laughs> guidelines. So for me, it's really important for me and the team that I'm on for us to read them and to be like, hey, there's a program that fits your circumstance. Or, hey, in order to qualify for this program, I need this to happen. I need your credit to go up. I need you to be at your job longer for six months. So that's what we do. Okay, see, now, so that's cute. So I heard some <laughs> others. No, because you guys were back there talking earlier, and I heard something around, like, seller credit. What yes, is that? A seller is, it, is it down the corner, or how's that, how's that go? It's like, no. <laughs> but what, what, what exactly is seller credit? Yeah, a seller credit. So that was coming from your wonderful realtor, Trey. Okay. Um, he would negotiate with the seller to pay part of your closing costs. And there's multiple aspects of buying a home. So there's a down payment and your total closing costs. So say that's $20,000. If your seller is like, hey, you know, this house has been sitting on the market for a little bit, we're going to give you $10,000. So that's less money that you have to bring to the table and your seller covered. Okay. Now, okay. You were talking earlier about like the mortgage plan. I know you had an overlay for that. So can you yes. tell us, can you get into that for me just a tad? Yes, just a tad. So when you look at, this is what I do for all clients. So it's like, hey, you qualify for say a $3,000 payment. That's a $500,000 house if you're comfortable with that payment. Okay. So you look at the different programs that are on there, FHA, VA, and I think I did conventional on there. And you're able to see what you qualify for, what that payment looks like what's in the mortgage payment, such as property taxes, mortgage insurance. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Has it been hard? How, how has it been in the areas of finding lending for Black people in King County? Keep it real. Mm. I would say it's tough. One, I feel like people want to work with people that look like them. And being a lender, there's less than 8% of us that look like me in the world of lending. So I think it is tough for people to navigate if you don't 
speak the language. So I think that's the toughest time for buyers in King County is that they don't find someone that speaks their language and then they get discouraged. Okay. And talk a little bit more about that buying power. Okay. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit but, about that? You, yes. you give, me, give me a little motivated. I just got some things to, <laughs> got a lot of bills, to, bills on bills, but you bills know. On bills. And we'll get it together in order to get a home. So your buying power, a lot of people are like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to mm -hmm. wait to buy a home. And if you look at the chart, you could see that, yeah, okay, you waited. Rates were at the fives. You could afford a $500,000 home. And they've continued to increase this year. So your buying power decreases. So yes, you could afford that $2,900 payment. But now that might be like a $400,000 home, $400, home instead yeah. of a five hundred. dollars See, okay. Look, Nick, no, say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look, wait. I'm trying to get I just heard a lot of numbers. I, <laughs> then I heard in the beginning you said 580, so yes. I'm like, wait, uh, uh, you if know, you could afford it, go for it. Okay, if you could afford the mortgage payment, that would be my thought. Go for it because you're marrying the home price and you're dating the mortgage because you could always refinance, you could always sell your home, but marrying that price. So if it's 500,000 or 400,000, you're marrying that price, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, say so, okay, so I'm, okay. I need to really be writing this stuff down. And you I know, should. I know my friends are watching. Yes, I know my credit's bad, but you know, a brother can dream, and I want to make sure community gets access for this. So let's start there. So <laughs> Jasmine, we were talking earlier, and I just to be personal just for a second. Mm -hmm. Like you are, where where are you from? I'm from here. Okay, okay. Where, where, okay so you're from what, Central eight? District, CD Garfield Bulldogs. Come on. Oh, okay. don't. Oh, wait a minute. I'm scared. Security. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Come on. So what is it like, like you are working in the areas of real estate mm -hmm. and these community, our community has been gentrified. Yes. So how, so what is that experience like make it, trying to be adamant with trying to get some of our community members out there in that specific area and all around uh, King County? It's tough. Like my mom still lives in the CD and I, and she is the only person of color on our block when we think about it, wow. that owns their home. And to see the CD change as much as it has is hard because people are priced out of that area. Like you sell grandma's home for 400,000 because grandma passed. And then now grandma's home is now five townhomes that are 700,000 a piece. So it's hard. So we're seeing that people have to migrate out of those areas, which is unfortunate. But guess what? You get a home in Renton, Auburn, you're still building that wealth. And hopefully we're not going to sell when you become a grandma right, that home. Right, okay. <laughs> right. And why is it important? So not only are you able to, how does your, I'm just in the space of is mama proud, but mm -hmm. like being able to be in that space. Cause mm -hmm. I, I know some of your family, right? So <laughs> yeah. just in the space of just being able to help support, help navigate your community members to keep mm -hmm. them back. Getting back in community, sorry. Getting back in community. Oh, it's it's an experience. Like, I truly enjoy it. When I think of, about of all the people that I've helped get into homes that are close or seeing multi-generational people in the home. So you're seeing grandma, you're seeing daughter, you're seeing son, at least staying in the area. I feel, I feel a sense of joy knowing that we at least get to keep a piece of the CD or the South End. I know, that's right. Yeah. I'm from the South End, though. Okay. But yes, Where'd a piece you of the CD. I went to Rainier Beach. Oh, I went to Rainier Beach. Okay. I, I, there's no beef, but you no know. beef. <laughs> All up. <laughs> All up. <laughs> can you give Can you give me one success? Can you give me a success story? I know you got one. Oh, a success story. Oh, I hope this wonderful client. It was her first home, and the most. It was the most nerve wracking, right? She was like, I don't have the credit, Jasmine. I'm in the fives. I'm like, okay, girl, we could do. It's not about if you'll become a homeowner. It's about when. So, okay, we just need to build it up. It took us about a year for us to build up her credit in order for her to buy her condo. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I was a part of that. So that's the biggest success story, I think, for me, because I'm like, we really spent the time like you came in with that mindset, that stigma that I can't do this. And then, OK, not right now. You can't do it right now, but we can make a plan and we got to it. So, right. yeah, know, that's right. OK, <laughs> so I see him over there just smiling I know. like he's just <laughs> smiling like a proud brother would. So as, I'm going to ask you the same question I okay. asked him. What is it like working with Trey? I adore Trey. What, he didn't tell you how we met, but we just met through a mutual friend um, that's a realtor and we clicked, right? It was just like, you speak my language. You're my type of vibe. You communicate. You, communication is the most important thing throughout this real estate process. And just 
we became buds. I just enjoy his energy, how he treats clients, how he treats me. Um, even though I'm his lender in business, he treats me truly like a friend, even though we're working together. So he's the best. Y'all use him if you need a home or don't need a home. He's back there crying, right? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He adores me. Yeah, can you, can you let people know where they can be able to find you? Yes. I'm going to make you do it again later on, but I want to okay. do it. Okay. Just... Um, yourmortgagebud.com, because I'm your mortgage bud. You need a friend. And then at jazz underscore Johnson McCoy on Instagram. Okay. Thanks, Jasmine. Thank I you. I appreciate you. She's yes. from the CD. From is the she, CD. Is she living? <laughs> I'm living. In color. Now, we'll, <laughs> we'll be back.